praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard. And from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor.
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. getting pushed back, and the things that like darkness, they walk with that darkness as it moves, just like a cockroach. When the light comes to an area, they jump into the darkness, and they keep jumping into any sort of area that's dark, because they don't want to be in the light. And so we see God loving the world so much, giving something far more precious than we could have imagined. If you've ever been to a Passover or to a Christian Seder, there's this um, phrase that is prayed over and over again, it would have been enough. And what our Jewish brothers and sisters pray is they talk about if Moses led the people through the Red Sea, or if the Lord led the people through the Red Sea, that would have been enough. That's an amazing gift, but God didn't stop there. If he had given just the manna in the desert, that would have been enough to show this immense love, but he didn't stop there. He kept going, and they go through all of these ways in which if he just did one of those actions, that would be far beyond anything that we could imagine, his loving faithfulness. But he doesn't stop. And ultimately, as Christians, we take that to a different level. He gave his only begotten son, the one that he loved, his most precious. He, he in a sense, gave him ver his very self. There's nothing more that he can give because that's everything. He didn't even hold back that. And that's his love pouring into the darkness. But there's this, there's this powerful reality within us that we can willingly choose to not receive so precious a gift and we self-blind ourselves because we're holding on to something else that we really think is going to satisfy our own little god, our own little idol. In the Bible, they talk about these household gods. And if you think of the, the ridiculousness of it, 
they fashion a little god, and they put that in their house, and that's a god that takes care of them. But just think how goofy that is. They're the one who crafted the god, they're the one who made everything about it, and somehow they've tricked themselves to thinking that this is the god that's going to save them. But do you see how if they carved everything, if they've designed everything, then what's left for the god to have power over them with? And yet, don't we do this in so many things in life? Our money that we craft, we then worship it. All these different man-made things, fame, glory, different things like that, and yet we put so much stock in that. We hold on to whatever that little God is. And yet if we hold on to the little God, well, that little God keeps running away because it remains in the darkness. And it just keeps running away, away from the light. And if we hold on to it, then we're kind of on like a, a moving track. We just go with it. And the Lord is saying, don't hold on to that thing. Just let it go. If you remember that, that beautiful image from Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade where he's, Indiana Jones is reaching. I, I just need to hold on. I just need to get this, this cup. And his father says, Indiana, let it go. And he reaches for his father. And his father lifts him out of that pit. Today we we hear of the very tragic story of these Sadducees, this priestly class, that had started to hold on to little gods, little by little, and stopped even believing in the resurrection. We learn about that later, but the Sadducees were actually even further removed than the Pharisees. And we think of the Pharisees as the big, big enemies of Jesus, but the Pharisees were so much more closer to Jesus. Many of them actually turned to Christ, such as Nicodemus, because they believed in the spiritual realm, they believed in the resurrection of the body, but the Sadducees, the ones who were the, the, the scribes, they actually stopped believing. And these are the ones that are called to the temple worship. And yet they stopped believing that there's more to this life. And some of it was they got wrapped up in holding on to their own power. And holding on to the power that they had under the rule of the Roman Empire. And they were afraid that if anything shook that, then somehow the Romans were going to come in, they would take that power, that order that they had created, a certain society that was able to live in peace, but it was like walking on eggshells. And that's what's driving them now, even after Jesus rose from the dead, even after now his apostles that were cowards before are going around healing and doing wonders, they still aren't able to see because they're preferring the darkness to the light. And their truth, if you think of Pontius Pilate in the sense of what is truth, their truth was that if we let these followers continue to stir up things, then the Romans are going to come in and destroy us. And we want to keep our little God of order and our world that we've created. But they're not realizing that everything is a gift from God. And so they're fighting, even when there's this crazy moment in which there's this divine jailbreak, and all the signs are pointing to this is not... This is not really just fighting against men, but as Gamaliel, the famous Pharisee that was very, very wise, saying, leave these men alone because if you keep going against them, you might actually find yourselves fighting against God. And 
so this is what's going on. This, these are sort of the, 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 the dynamics that are moving these Sadducees and the Pharisees as well to just keep fighting against this love that's breaking out of prison, this love that is healing, and yet they're not able to see it. And it's good for us to, to look and see what are the areas, what are the little household gods that we hold on to? Let's ask the Lord for the grace because it's only through the Holy Spirit that our eyes can be open to hear our Father's voice, not Henry Jones, but our Heavenly Father, saying, Indiana, let it go. Stop holding on to that thing that you think is going to give you peace and everlasting joy because it's just a household God that you fashioned, and somehow you've forgotten that I'm the Lord. So let go of it, because it's just moving into the darkness further and further, and off the cliff. Let go of it, and hold on to the light who is love. And the Lord wants this for us. That's the beautiful gift. The Lord's not, in a sense, hiding it from us. He's not playing hard to get, but he's saying, I so love the world that I gave everything. I'm pouring light into darkness. And all of those who turn to me, regardless of how far you are on that spectrum of darkness, if you just turn to me, I'll help you to let that household God go. I will give you the feast on my mountain in which I will swallow up death forever. throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit continue to empower her in her witness to the truth of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For our world leaders, may the Spirit guide them in enacting policy that protects life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with loneliness and isolation, May the Lord lift up their hearts and bring them comfort and companionship. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear For all families in this faith community, may the Lord bless them with unity, joy, love, and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear For all the faithful departed, may God welcome them joyfully to his eternal banquet. We especially pray for the repose of the soul of Don Hammond, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of Pope Francis for this month. We pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, even democracies in crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for all the intentions that are that have been given to us in our ladies' intercessory box or online, or those that are within our hearts. We pray, O Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
receive the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we, make it, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. The 
this tree of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Hallelujah. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, as, as I mentioned before, I definitely would encourage you to uh, 
um, continue following that series The Chosen. Um, there actually were two episodes that popped up last night um, in sequence. So there's actually, a, this is now season two, one, two, and three. And they are very, very beautiful. Um, there's a lot of great, rich meditation material in the midst of it. Um, I just found myself very moved um, by these last two. I just encourage you to, it's free. You just go on the app and all of these things are here. And it's a beautiful way to share, especially to take friends that maybe, um, you know, maybe have seen Jesus in the past as maybe just sort of a flat person. You just kind of like Jesus, just kind of a guy, you know, just on the pictures and stuff. This just has a very powerful evangelistic way of helping people in our contemporary society right now to discover more and more the deep love of the God that loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And we see ourselves very beautifully um, and very powerfully in these apostles. They're really in flesh. They're very real characters. They're not really just on a card, but you really get to see how these um, these different disciples, how they grew, and how they really remind us of ourselves, to help us remind us that the scriptures are not really just a story that's nice from the past, but it's an alive story, ever ancient, ever new, and God wants us to be able to um, follow Christ um, and to realize that we too are chosen and called um, to follow him. So I encourage you to, to, to think about that. It's a very simple thing, but it's something that can be a great life changer for you and different people that are in your life. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and come with him. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Ghost, by the divine power of God, casting them all Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided, inspired by this confidence, and fly to you.